Yeah. Hello again, viewers of AVG News. We are back here on this channel with our interviews. You remember that we have these weekly interviews with uh, political activist, Mneti um, Sikeritwala. This week, we're talking about the 2023 elections. But before we go ahead, Mr. Twala, welcome to the channel. Uh, thank you for hosting me here, uh, Mr. Nube. Uh, I hope we're going to have a great conversation, informative, you know, um, a, a conversation that will help us actually uh, tackle uh, and uh, look into these issues uh, with a, a clever eye. That's my hope as well. Right. When we talk about elections in Zimbabwe, since 2000, it has always been a two-horse race. We had a Tito in 2008 when the MTC had just split and we had two MTCs which made it a, a three-party race. We are back again focusing on 2023. Do you think, do you think this trend is going to change? Well, uh, I'm actually against uh, the idea of elections. Uh, not that I'm saying uh, people shouldn't uh, hold elections or people shouldn't vote. Uh, if you look at the, the history of the Zimbabwean elections, um, there has been always one outcome, uh, despite um, uh, people convincing us that uh, things are gonna change, things are gonna change. There has always been one outcome of which we need to look into why has that been so? Uh, it is because uh, elections in Zimbabwe actually ceased to be meaningful. Uh, elections in Zimbabwe are now used as a ritual uh, to sanitize some scandalous behaviors uh, by those that uh, have captured uh, 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 the judiciary, those that have captured uh, the police force, those that have captured the army and actually use it against the citizens uh, to facilitate uh, this uh, predictable outcome, even though we have some people um, who have uh, actually hoodwinked people into believing that uh, elections will bring about change. If you think they will uh, bring about some change in 2023, why not in all these years? Because you're applying the same formula and you expect different outcomes. This is, this is to me, it sounds foolish. Uh, when you say we've been doing the same thing and you don't believe in elections anymore, what other option do Zimbabweans have? Zimbabweans have the options to demand sanity. Zimbabweans have the option uh, to demand, you know, a, 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 a credible a build up to the elections. Remember, um, when we talk about elections, we shouldn't talk about uh, the uh, voter registration, casting of the ballots and stuff like that. Okay, that is, that is the day when we actually uh, test uh, the processes that were involved in having that um, election happen. So if you look at uh, the circumstances in Zimbabwe right now, you do not have uh, freedom of speech when it comes to very important issues. Uh, citizens, uh, I mean, state uh, institutions have been kidnapped. I mean, they've, they've been they, they have been diverted and actually they are owned by one contender in these elections. That is a fact, we cannot deny that. So why the heck would you still believe uh, there will be any change? Facility, I mean, inspired by the election. Um, Zimbabwe has more than a hundred political parties, although only two have been uh, getting these votes and representation in parliament. And we have so many civil society movements, we've got the citizens as well. So when you say Zimbabweans should demand these changes, who exactly are you talking about? Are you talking about political parties? Are we talking about civil society? Who exactly are we talking about? I, uh, Mr. Nube, I'm not a fan of political parties. I wish we would dismantle ZANU, I wish we would dismantle uh, MTC, which now calls itself uh, CCC. I wish you could forget about ZAPU. Actually, ZAPU at the moment uh, is not a political party. It's just a group of people who, um, who, are, who, are, who, are, who love ZAPU. They are preserving the history of ZAPU. But as far as politics is concerned, uh, I dismiss them. Uh, they have nothing to offer us. TPF should dismantle. We don't need such a uh, political party. We, we, still, we still keep forming political parties. We are dividing people. If you look at uh, 
uh, the, 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 the biggest clown in Zimbabwean politics, which is uh, uh, um, CCC. Uh, it is a party uh, that has a lot of lawyers and those people call themselves the opposition party. Okay, that approach in politics is actually, uh, it, 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 it exposes how ignorant you are. You're opposing, always opposing what? What should you always oppose? Do you mean to tell me there's not even a single thing that we can agree on? So they're opposing, opposing, opposing. I, I, I don't subscribe to that kind of mentality. Yeah, we'll come back to political parties, but I still, my question still stands. When you say Zimbabwe yes. should demand these changes, who exactly are you referring to? You don't believe in political parties, who exactly are referring, I mean, should demand yeah. these changes? May, may I apologize? Uh, I, 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 I ended up <laughs> deviating into political parties, but my point was uh, we should come together as citizens. No political formations involved. We, we, we should stand up for, for, for good in our communities. It started, it would start at grassroots level from villages to provinces, all of us as Zimbabweans. We should demand that even any political party that wants to be a player uh, should respect uh, citizens, should respect uh, citizens' rights. But now, if we stand up as political parties, we divide ourselves, we start fighting. If I have, I disagree with you on something, would end up not belonging to the same political party. That's when we start contesting about who is better instead of taking community issues, instead of uh, 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 paying attention to governance, proper governance. So we should stand up as citizens. That, that is why I'm saying at the moment, we cannot hold an election. We are too divided. Like you are saying such a tiny country, had political parties, which are useless, by the way. Yes. Uh, so I we can, I can, I... I kind of agree with you that uh, we need to dismantle these political parties because they are dividing the people. But looking at uh, the current situation in Zimbabwe, we should agree that uh, there is this ideal world which we are talking about, which I'm agreeing with, of dismantling political right. parties. Then, but in reality, we need to mix this ideal with the possible, I mean, with, with the ideal, with the current situation to come up with the possible. And what is happening right now is that Zimbabweans, the generation that we have, we are so cultist that we, we end up following other people because we consider them our leaders. We don't want to stand up on our own, especially against these people. So how do you think it is possible for Zimbabweans to stand up on their own, bereft of political parties to demand this change? Uh, it, it might seem difficult, and yes, it is difficult because uh, now the average adult now is an adult that was born in chaos. So if we, are talk, if we were to talk about normalcy, they really don't have an idea of what we are talking about. But now, remember when we were children, or maybe you have seen it happen even nowadays, whereby a child has taken too long, uh, uh, he can stand up, but that child is kind of reluctant uh, to walk. You know, is that what they do? What they do? Bam nebizbun or bam chisera nan pueka kichi. So this is to say to us, that's got to get to a point where we would have to stand up. We 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 haven't gotten that far. We are suffering a lot. There's a lot of problems, but we have we have, we haven't gathered the courage to come together and fight this. Look, remember, we possess the power, but we have given it to politicians by letting them do as they wish. But if we stand up together today in numbers, they would listen to us. Unfortunately, you stand in smaller groups called TPF, called MDC, called ZANU-PF. You will never, ever be able to, 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 to fight and win against these politicians because they, they, they have the privilege of using the army against you. They have the privilege of using the police force against you. They have the privilege of using the justice system against you. As a, as a matter of fact, we don't have a justice system. We have an injustice system in Zimbabwe. Yes. What do you think it will take for Zimbabweans to see things as you are seeing them right now, for them to know that they don't need political parties for them to stand up and demand their rights? What exactly? You're saying we haven't suffered enough, but when a quarter of and when a quarter of the country's population 
-hmm. is outside the country. It means that they have suffered enough. Now we have these Dutula movements in South Africa. People are dying. We saw how, unfortunately, uh, our, our the, the, the quarry way in it, one of our city, fellow citizen, uh, mm. Mr. Elvis, Elvis Nyati died. And he was, in, actually not the, he was actually not the first person to die in that particular yeah. manner. But Zimbabweans are still leaving the country by the troughs. What is What will it take? for them to stand up and say, now we are fighting? Uh, first of all, before I talk about things uh, that are bad, you know, like uh, uh, being forced to stand up because of suffering, I want to talk about the good things. The good things are, we should have conversations about this. So thank you, uh, Mr. Nguve, uh, AKA Baba Chukwa, for bringing these conversations. You see, what uh, inspires or triggers action is common understanding amongst people. And common understanding is only possible if we have conversations. We shall stand up and talk. I, I know it is, it, 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 we, we are slowly gaining traction. If you study our community, it is slowly coming together. We are slowly standing up for one another. Even if we could do better than this, there are, there are people who are still reluctant. We need to correct that. Secondly, I want to talk about the bad things, which is what is happening in South Africa, which is what is happening in London, in America, where people have fled the country. And then they encounter problems whereby it's very difficult for them to get documentation and stuff like that. So now we need to talk to them while they're still in their suffering and say, how did we get here? What can we do in order for us uh, to live a better life? What can we do in order for us to live this life that we are living out of our borders? Is it not possible inside? I think we have seen a lot of diasporans trying to go back home to build and stuff like that, but they are reluctant because of the environment. But if we fix the environment, if we fix things, if there's law and order, you won't tell this environment to go back, they will go back by themselves. But this fixing that you're talking about, you're talking about there being law and order, you're talking about if we fix, but we are the people who are supposed to fix this. Uh, yes. I was reading a, a post on Facebook by one of the politicians that I will not mention, and he was saying Zimbabweans don't want to be freed. They want a particular person to free them. Uh, yes. Now, this shows you that, uh, and then, of course, we had two examples, again okay, of people who were non-political trying to rise up and try and dovetail people into their agenda, like we had Itai Tamara, who was a journalist, he mm -hmm. left the pen and said, no, 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 enough is enough. Let's occupy Africa Unity Square. We had the right. then opposition leader, mainstream opposition leader, Mokem Tsongirai, saying, no, 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 mm -hmm. this guy is just trying to gain some political mileage. And people stayed away because their ultimate leader then did not back this call. Then we had Pastor Evans Mawariri mm -hmm. doing a similar, uh, almost similar type of action saying, this flag, nobody yes. joined him. We abandoned him. Now, it seems that Zimbabweans can only join this kind of action when a particular individual says that. My question is, what will it take for Zimbabweans mm -hmm. in the majority to move away from this comfort zone of following a particular person and pursuing a particular person's agenda into pursuing their broad national agenda? It's kind of <clears throat> difficult to get there, but it is possible. I think uh, what makes people watch when somebody stands up, like the people that we have mentioned, it is the mentality of um, Imbonani. Uh, a lot of people have, now it's all about uh, 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 you being credited for, for, for anything that happens. So if we were, if we were to say, to call for an, an uprise, they look at who called the uprising. They don't look at, at what is the reason behind the uprising. That is our biggest problem. That is the, the reason actually why we have hundred political parties. Yeah. If a party starts doing a certain thing, another one splits and, 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 and starts doing the same instead of us working together. I mean, yes. So why would you sing somebody does something instead of working with them and then you, you go and start a, a, another political formation? Um, now, now, let's say 
you've already said that you don't believe in elections, but unless and until we, we find another alternative to elections, we'll keep on going to elections. And there is, there is an alternative. There is an alternative. There is an alternative. We need, to, I've always said this, uh, Mr. Ngobi, from way 2013, all these the past three elections, I've said it and I've made an effort uh, to, to, to be in contact with, the, with, with one of the biggest contenders, which is in this case is MTCs. Guys, uh, the guys that you are you're, you're contesting against are the guys who calls the shots on elections. They decide on the date of the election. They decide on the people that are, 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 are manning uh, uh, ZEC, which is the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission. They have captured the judiciary system in case you argue about uh, you know, some rigging and stuff like that. They have got the courts. So you will not win in this case. So an election is a waste of time. Let us stand up and protest against this government and call them to resign. Transitional government formed. We fix everything. We fix the police force. We fix the army. We detox people of the fear that has been, uh, uh, you know, imposed on them uh, uh, by Zanu. Then we can take it from there. Thinking of an election today, you're wasting your time. I don't care if you are Zanu or you are MTC. That election is never a, a true election that reflects the people's choices. It's manipulated numbers. At the end of the day, you even fight against one another. You people don't vote. You accuse people of not voting, even if they did. But the numbers are, are flipped around. Yeah. Uh, now you and, about... and while while you still fight, they they loot and go on. Yeah, you've spoken about the MTC, which is now it has mutated into triple C. Now yeah. we have heard them in the past saying, no election, no 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 reforms. No election. But when yeah. the time comes, you hear them now saying we are going to win it. So do you think they genuinely want this kind of reforms that you are talking about? No. Like I said before, CCC is the biggest political clown in Zimbabwe. Um, they have always uh, 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 said no reforms, no elections. But we see that happening all the time. And we don't even question them after the elections. Like, but why then did you end up going, getting involved in, in the elections while you had said no reforms, no elections? Because there's no reforms. Now, this is the reason why I think they, 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 they keep doing that. I think they long found a job to, 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 to be a proxy, to act as the so-called opposition, uh, to act as the, as the people who actually want to fight uh, for citizens. That is why. Uh, uh, during the day, uh, they would say, uh, we, 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 we are fighting this regime that is actually abusing its own, its own citizens. But uh, whenever it comes to other stuff, you know, their, 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 their criminal activities and stuff like that, when they find themselves in court, MTC lawyers are found defending these people. And then when we ask them, they have this uh, a foolish uh, 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 justification that at the end of the day, they are lawyers, they need bread for their children. I cannot make bread by feeding uh, people who are abusing my own kids. I cannot make bread out of uh, uh, looted money. When people are dying in hospitals, women are giving birth on the floor, no medication, but you go and represent those people to put bread on the table for your own kids. Is that not foolishness? Um, I, I spoke. I spoke to one founding member of the MTC, who happened to also be, who happens to be a former advisor to the founding MTC president Morgan Swangrai, just last week, and he was saying these guys are just treasure hunters. Do you agree with him? Yes, I totally agree. Shamisa okay. now the president. Well known, he has been in business with the Mugabe's for quite a long time. We we, we know about that. Why is Chamisa uh, 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 not uh, fighting for, for instance, you're talking about elections? Okay, who is who is feeding the Zimbabwean economy at the moment? Who's who, who's keeping Zimbabwean uh, Zimbabwe alive? It is you, the diaspora, people who are outside. And then you talk of an election, and then there's millions of your children next door in South Africa. You don't even talk about them. Yeah, having to give them an opportunity to at least participate in, in elections. Are you serious about elections? 
other countries would even send, they know they have records of their citizens outside the country. They know it's election time. We have somebody in Belgium. They send them mail voting, just one person. But in this case, you have actually Johannesburg, or the people in South Africa, it is the largest uh, 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 district, political district of, of Zimbabwe. There's more voters in South Africa more than in any constituency in Zimbabwe. Yes, that's, that's very true. We are left with around five minutes to wind up. You are saying the elections are not the way, but as I've said, we are going to have elections. Uh, so let's say Kerituala is given a chance to vote in the diaspora. In this bipolar situation, who would you choose? I mean, who would I choose as what? Who would you vote for? <laughs> would you stay away? Staying away is not an option. I'm saying you are now pushed in a corner. You are told to vote. Yes. Okay. Instead of going to vote, I would rather you know, take off my house, go to the streets of Johannesburg and pick up papers, just clean the streets. I think that would be worth it than for me to go and cast a vote. So in other words, you are saying Zimbabwe is to stay away from voting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pointless. It's pointless. It's a waste of time. Actually, you people participating in these elections, you are endorsing Zanu PF because you have helped them lie to the world, lie even to you people that we are having an election when you know exactly it is not a genuine election. Yeah. Can, can, can you predict Zimbabwe after 2023? After the 2023 elections, in your own not, uh, foresight, what do you think is going to happen? It's, it, it's not a prediction. It's something that we know is going to happen. Zan is going to continue. We have actually lost it. 20, we have lost 2023. The only, the only uh, thing we can do to correct the mess is for us to stand against uh, Zanu as a people, as citizens, no political parties. That is why I haven't been vocal in politics. Why? Because I want to have a conversation with you after the elections. I have been saying the same things. And most of you are accusing me of saying, uh, Twala is saying people shouldn't vote. They should, they should boycott the election. I've never said boycott the election. I said block. This is your country. You have a right of of association, if it's taken away from you, take, take it away from them and bring it back and practice freedom of association, freedom of speech, stand up. Uh, do, do, do you believe that the ordinary Zimbabwean wants change? They do, but they are, most of them are confused. They, 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 they really, like I'm saying, they've, we have been in this chaos for quite a long time, very, very, very long time. And a lot of people now believe, well, let's vote, register to vote. You find somebody in Australia, even, you know, flying from, Aust from Australia, going to Zimbabwe to register, you fly back to Australia, election times, they fly back. Those are fools. Those are fools. You are buying that vote. The, the, the reason why I'm you asking this. You should advocate for, 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 for everybody to vote yeah. within and outside the borders. It, it, the government caused the situation, it pushed its own citizens outside. Therefore, it should be able to afford them the ballot box where they are. It is their right. Now, may I go on and tell you why this is not happening? It is because one, the, 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 the stuff that they do within Zimbabwe, the intimidation, the rigging and stuff like that, it cannot happen in London because there an Australian can go and monitor, you know, the, 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 the British won't need any permission from Zimbabwe to come and monitor the elections so that they expose what's happening. The people that are outside, especially my brothers and sisters in Johannesburg, who are molested every time they cross the border with the liquid they have, I don't think they will vote for that government. So they know that these people don't want us. So uh, deny them the vote. Zanu Pif, just as a last question, then you will answer this question and then round up on your side. Okay. Zanu PF says, they cannot allow the diaspora vote because they are not allowed. They are, you know, they are, they are sanctioned in certain countries. They cannot go there to campaign. And what they want is for themselves to be allowed to go out there and campaign. Then they can allow the diaspora vote. Do you, don't you believe that is a, a genuine case? No, it's not. It, 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 it's one of those uh, silly excuses. We, 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 they, they don't need to campaign. 
what they actually did to us was campaign enough for us to make a decision about who, who, who we can vote for. In this case, which is not Zano PF. Okay, obviously they won't agree with you there. Uh, just to wind up, thank you very much uh, for joining us again this week. We'll make sure that we increase the time next week. But now, rounding up, what do you promise? I mean, what do you tell Zimbabweans? You've told them that the votes will not uh, work. Already, I know there are some who are going to insult you for saying that because they've got so much desperation to see things changing. What is your last word some, to them? Some of them are actually so desperate to vote for Chamisa. Yes. They've been conditioned to vote for a, that popular person. But do they know the principles of CCC? Have they studied the history of elections and their outcomes? These are people who are not realistic about stuff. They follow what their leaders have. Vote for us, we will build you spaghetti roads. How will they build a spaghetti roads when they cannot create an environment where we can afford to spaghetti? It's so good. Yes. Does it make sense? Go on with your question. Yes, uh, I'm saying, uh, as you round up, what do you tell them to do? Hey. One thing I, I want to uh, um, uh, make citizens know is that uh, they possess the power, not the politicians. Imagine if all of us could stand up. Uh, let me use myself as an example. Uh, I have refused to be silenced by being intimidated. Don't talk about this, don't say this, but I have stood, but they have listened. So imagine, if there were 100 of us, 500 of us, 1,000 of us, such that if, even if we need uh, to demand something, we can go as a group and demand that there be sanity and demand that there be service delivery and demand that uh, the people explain uh, where the, our, our, our state funds are going, we'll be somewhere. Yes. These politi politicians will never solve your problems. Your pro your problems actually are the politicians. You are feeding these babies. That is why they are buying Ferraris. Why well, you can't afford Zuko? But you go on and you late celebrate them for buying Ferraris. Huh? A grown person. What will you do with that Ferrari in, in, in roads that have, it's not even portals. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we for your time. We'll call you back again next week. Now, let me tell you what we'll be talking about next week. You touched on uh -huh. it a bit. We are talking right. about. We are reviewing political parties. We are talking about Zanu PF. We are talking uh -huh. about Triple C. We are talking about right. Zapu. We'll talk about the other parties later, but I'll like try and make sure that. Yeah, no, we cannot talk about TPF for obvious, for obvious reasons, but we'll make sure that we get people to represent these two parties, or these three parties rather, so it will be a panel of some sort. So for now, thank you very much. Uh, let us meet again here next week. Subscribe us. That was Gary Twala. That is Gary Twala. He's a Zimbabwe who's based in the United States. He suffered in the hands of the regime that we have back home. And he is one of the people that continue to wish for better for Zimbabwe. So thank you very much. Please subscribe to this channel, share this video, and like it. Thank you very much, Mr. Twal. Thank you so much, Mr. Mube, and uh, thank you to your viewers and listeners. And uh, I encourage you today. You're, you're disrupting the record. <laughs> I, was, I was encouraging uh, your viewers and listeners uh, to always not forget uh, to subscribe and watch all our videos and share this channel with your friends, your relatives. Uh, that way, uh, we in the future will have uh, a, a lot of opinions coming from you guys, but we'll read your comments uh, and we'll be able to get back to you. We'll get to know what you are thinking. We won't know if you don't engage and comment and follow the channel. So please invite your friends, invite your relatives. Let us be here almost every day. Thank okay. you so much, uh, Mr. Thank you.